今日も張り切っていきますよ Greetings YouTube, this is BJ Black and welcome to part 24 of my let's play of Amayui Castle Meister We're gonna start with Mikayu's scene here So, so this is a, another study session with Mikayu Today we're learning about the old magic language of the ancient elves and the time it was mixed with human languages in order to form another language entirely. This is called the current magic language or Fastina Holy, the Fastina Holy dialect. But Mikayu doesn't seem to be concentrating very well today. She's got a little question for us. A question already. Okay, go ahead. So, she's asking Avaro why he decided to become an engineer instead of various other building and repairing professions he had to choose from. Hmm. Navarro says because he was interested in it and it was the one that seemed closest. So among magicians, she asks, there are various types, right? Mm hmm. Avaro could also be called a magician who specializes in construction and uh, renovations. And in Fia's case it would be recovery magic in particular. And Mikeu doesn't know much besides a few attack spells. So she hasn't been thinking too deeply about the magic techniques she learns. But she's come to start wondering about what kind of magic she should be pursuing. She hasn't changed her mind about trying her best, but she thinks if she finds the school which she which best fits her, she'll be able to rise faster. Yeah, she's been worrying about that lately apparently. So Asking for Avaro's opinion, he can give what he can give his experience of it. Although it doesn't seem like it's going to be a fun, he doesn't think it'll be a very fun conversation. But she's got a pretty low bar for fun when it comes to magic. Oh, hey, this is the room he made for Eol and Mikio. They've cleaned it up pretty nice. Oh, anyway. So, where do we start? From the beginning, Avaro wanted to build things. But, the time I... Yeah. But eventually, he got... He received an impetus to, that drove him in the direction of engineer. A simple impetus, hmm? He only thinks of it as a simple impetus now that he thinks back on it, though. He too hadn't thought too deeply about the decisions he made. Kind of like Mikayu hadn't up to now.
So, Avaro didn't fit in very well since he was a little child. There was the problem of him being a half-elf and all, but he also drew a lot of attention and he himself didn't want to fit in all... didn't think about fitting in all too much. But when people got to using the things he made, they would start to know him and call him by name and say thanks for everything and things like that. And that's how we came to decide it. Mikio kind of gets it. So with Avaro making his creations part of the town, is kind of some a way you could say it. With the techniques he learned, putting into work all of his, putting into effect the his works and making a foundation for people that everybody could live on. So he kind of thinks of himself as a foundational pillar of society. And that's why he decided to polish up his his mechanicing and knowledge based skills. And before he knew it, he was an engineer. Oh, uh, no. Damn this Japanese language. He can't exactly say that before he knew it, he was an engineer. But in terms of what he was aiming for, that was basically it from the impetus he had back in when he was a kid. Alright, Mikio thinks she, she can use that as a bit of a rolled model. I'm always glad for that. So, let's ask Mikeu what her impetus was for be No, oh, excuse me. What her impetus was for becoming a magician. Well, before she left her hometown, she kind of had the feeling she wanted to do it. But when she started getting serious about aiming for that, was when, was after she met Eo. Watching her fight, she was really cool, and Mikeu admired her. Yeah, I've already heard about this. Mikio was attacked by monsters and Eel saved her. So Mikio's impetus was all Eel. Even the, her first magic book, Eel went and got it for her. Navarro didn't think Eel would have a magic book. Okay, so let's ask this. For what reason did you decide to help Mikeu become a magician? Avaro thinks that she did it so that Mikeu could do what she wanted to do, to do as much as she could. What she wants to do as much as she could, hmm? Well, it's true you should... It's important to find the magic that's right for you. You also have to... It's also very important to consider what you want to do with that magic. What she wants to do with it. You can tell she's paying close attention by the way she repeats what Alvaro says. Well, Mikio answers without hesitation. Isn't she cute? 
稼ぎたいですイオルと二人で豊かに暮らしていけるために She wants to earn money so that she and Eol can live a nice luxurious life <laughs> That's a splendid goal So How do you plan on earning money as a with your magic? There are all kinds of jobs you can take and you can go to various countries and get hired. She wants to be the magician of a royal or imperial court. So she needs to have a lot of talent for that. That's true. So, what does Mikayu think of her talent? Well, in whatever she feels she chooses, she needs to develop some kind of unique and special abilities to show off. Avaru agrees, but that's not all. In that field, you also need to have an interest. In fact, having an interest in it is kind of like having another talent in it. If you're not doing what you like, then it will be very difficult to get ahead by studying, even if it is magic. In now she's repeating him again. Interest and what she likes. Hmm. You may think of it as merely a play on words, but you need what's important is that you think about what the way you want to do things. And what you like. In order to be able to do new things. He's talking about himself. In order to be able to do th new things, he learned his engineering skills and raised them up. And it was actually fun for him. And as if by accident, he just got better at it. <laughs> yeah, following his dream, he really got prepossessed by that. So, if Mikeu can find a field that she is interested in like that, she'll be doing well. And if she doesn't, it'll be pretty hard for her. Alright. She's going to keep this in mind. What she, how she wants to do things and what she likes to do. Alright. So, now that you've, we've cleared your head, let's start studying. In any case, what we're going to do here can be the basics of what you learn later. Alright, one step at a time, right? The way they hand MEGA POWER! I like candy. I'm surprised they even expect us to not get to the next rank way early. Hmm, let's see. All right, you and Mickey are sharing some candies during a break. So they're down to the last one. Mikeyo offers it to Eel. Eel says, we're going to split it in halves. Gee, thanks. It's tasty. Well, they are candies. Navarro observes that the two of them really do get along well. Rather like twins, he thinks. 
Twins. Is that something we should aim for? It's not something you can aim for, really. It's a re blood relation, after all. Yeah, Mikio's overthinking this, but she's saying, do twins really get along that well? If there were more, if there were another one of me, she'd be a bit afraid. And anyway, she and Eol don't resemble each other at all. Hmm. Well, maybe it's because they don't resemble each other, they get along well. That happens too. He also says something surprisingly deep in that because everybody's different, everybody gets along. And yes, there is some truth in that. Well, anyway, what Avaro was trying to say is these two get along so well that they'd be able to split candies like that. It's a very pleasant scene. So, Mikio asks, if it were Fio, Fia and Avaro with one last candy, what would happen? Well, if it was her, she would probably try to mouth feed it to me. Oh, something like she holds it in her mouth and makes Avaro, Avaro bite his half off. Heh. <laughs> and then they could say that they ate it together. She can tell he's not joking, and that's kind of scary. But if it was Avaro, he would give it to the goddess. <laughs> that's Eo for you. Yep, she's right. More than eating candies himself, he likes to... He does enjoy watching other people enjoying themselves. rather than being a pleasant sight. It might be kind of embarrassing to watch that. Well, Fia's like that. Now, if I was going to ask, well, that's the way it is for a candy you can split. But what if you two had something you couldn't split? Well, he didn't waste much time. She would give it to Mikeo. Yep. Anything? Yep, she wouldn't hesitate at all. <laughs> Even though she's a girl, she's kind of manly in a way. Dah. Mavaro thinks about calling her Eel son. Ah, oh, no, that just wouldn't feel right. But Mikio's got a thought in her head. So, Eel, if you and she happen to like the same guy, what would you do? Hey, I think I've heard this line before. Actually, I've listened to both of those lines in my trial run. It's actually two separate recordings. So, what if you like that person so much that you want to do prioritize him over me? Eel says that's all right. She'll never like someone more than me, Kayu. Hmm. She's happy to hear that, but she's thinking that 
liking your family and friends is different from liking someone of the opposite sex. There's nothing in the world Eo likes more than Mikeyu. Family is that important. Hmm. Oh, family, huh? I was a bit was a bit shocked there. What did you think she was saying? No, I thought <laughs> He was thinking I can't believe there there's a girl's romance going on here. You and Mikeyu? No, Mikhail's a little offended. <laughs> she is a normal girl who likes men. Okay. Eel, for her part, says if it would make Mikeyu happy, she would do anything. And ends her sentence with the flush sound effect. <laughs> Love is heavy, huh? So she thanks her and says that both of them need to find their own romances. Well, she's going to do it and Eel should try her best as well. Sounds good. I've always wondering if Eel really understands the concept of like and love and things. Well... Mikael saying Eel isn't that young, but she hasn't developed an interest in romance yet. Yeah, Eel in a romance. On the one hand, it might be cute, but on the one hand, it might be scary. Can anyone say Yandere? Yes, all right, so the break's over. Let's uh, get to work before we get to dinner. Yep, Eel, Eel is also energized by the candy they ate. So, we have no special events planned. Hmm, did I do this? Oh god. I want to get rid of these ones. So I don't actually use them apart. Ronnie. Hmm. No, I want to keep all of these for Karin. So I'm gonna reset. So I guess I get to restart capturing everything all over again. I bet this is one of the reasons why they changed the number of monsters you could get from having a cage in town. Oh. Anyway, now that we have Ronnie and we have a flying character, so we can complete this map. And this is as good a place as any. You lazy bitch. Now I'm gonna pull Varo out because he's really weak and he can capture these things. Is 
is he four levels behind my main characters now? Jeez. Hmm? Did I remember to capture this one? Yes, I did. Capture. Earth fragments. Oh, jeez. Now I've always been hidden by those lightning butterflies so hard he can hardly move. It only lasts five turns, though. That's right. Collecting the reward means I'll have to take control of all the rooms. Jeez, I've all snap out of it already. Oh, don't tell me that other lightning butterfly extended the duration. It probably did. Alright, that's 100% so we can get our treasure and get out of here. It's not a special treasure though. 3,000 gold. Hmm. Let's see. Steel scraps, clay, improved clay, wood, magic ore, green grass. I could use more green grass, actually. Alright. This is taking place up in the Holy Mountain Range. Near to the Fuchsia God's, uh, No, near to the place that is closest to the god Fuchsia, that is, the god's haze, there's the Farara Rearos, holy area and holy ground, the spiritual area and holy ground. And in the western portion of that is the peak which the dragon tribes control. This is called the Raifuno Unkai. And amongst the dragons there, there is a descendant of the one that fought alongside Fuchsia before he was deified. And in this area, there is a powerless little girl, dragon girl, who is, uh, well, she's crying her eyes out, seriously. That's a pretty cute way of saying Tolsama. Well, so her dad, apparently, is dead. So, 
she just continues to cry over this and the that guy next to her is a, a lizard dragon soldier type I know he doesn't have wings so we could basically call him a lizard man although he's got dragon in his title so he's at least considered a dragonoid so, he tells Katorito to raise her head and basically continuing to go like this would make her father sad. So she is the one who has to take up the mantle of the lightning. Well, Raifu is the era, is the whole area, so it may encompass all of the dragons. Anyway, she is someone who should be leading them, and to continue like this is a hindrance to that. Well, <laughs> she says she can't. She doesn't know what to do. <laughs> and at that time, a cold wind and clouds came in. Remember this guy? So yeah, he's the absolute ice hero I guess you could call him so yeah cold winds totally match it so it would appear that he's been made the new chieftain of the dragons So he looks down at the little girl who won't even greet him and snorts some ice breath. So she still hasn't awoken and farther from that she just continues crying. What can this be said? What does this say about the pride, the high pride of the dragon tribes? So, she is not awakened yet. As I understand it, the dragon tribes are born with basically humanoid features, and later on they awaken to, in some cases, a transformation into a great dragon, or, I don't know, there could be all kinds of transformations that go on. But she can't transform into anything but what she is now, so she's considered unawakened. Well, he heaps this scorn upon her, but she just continues crying and flinching away from him a bit. <laughs> This guy's harsh. So, this is the only child of the great dragon, Shiukeru. Shiukeru. God, it's likely enjoy making these impossible to pronounce. Anyway, that would be the chief who died. Probably at the hands of Gaidal. Anyway. It's the... <laughs> For her to take over, it would be the end of the dragons. He says that her father's death was in vain. So, she looks up a bit. But being glared at by him, she just swallows her words. 
そなたの父は偉大であっただが唯一の汚点はそなただ Your father was great but his one flaw was you そなたのような出来損ないしか残さなかったことは竜族の誇りにあだなすそまんよ To leave nothing behind but a failure such as yourself. It's shamed the name of the dragons. Yeah, talk about rude. And the lizard man speaks up at this. Zhe Hyoko! Ika ni anata sama to iedo. Sore wa hide ni sugiru to yu mono dewa arimasen ka. So, even if it is this guy. Speaking so ill manneredly is excessive. Ryuzoku no osa tomo aro o anata ga. Shisha ni. Mashte ya. Nagaraku kono life o osa meta. Idai no ryu o bujok suru nado. Well, even if he is a leader of the dragons, it's disrespectful to the dead and further disrespectful to the great dragon who ruled the. Dragon area for so long. So, why does this girl say nothing? Again, with the ice breath coming out, and Katorito again just flinches. If there is a counter argument, then she can say it herself. He will listen and lend her her ear if she has anything to say. So, speak, child. <laughs> So, see, this is reality. Shuketor did one thing good here. He died before you awakened. Because he died before she awakened, he was unable to name her as his successor. And having such a failure as the next dragon chief would be ruinous to the tribes. So we could say that's Shuketoru's final duty. God, what an ass. And now what happens is the lizard man notices the ice power that's coming up here. So what does he plan to do? <laughs> so he's protecting the pride of the dragon tribes and using his power here. It's all, and sadly using his power here with sadness, right? It is all for the great dragon tribes. He's asking that, that guy to stop and says the Katorito still needs time. If she would just awaken, she will. He says they've given her enough time, and they don't have any time left. K 
Chaturito during this is just shivering in fear and sadness. She doesn't know exactly what's going on, but she knows it's going to be bad. Child, I will ask you this one last time. Or, for the last, I will ask you this. Do you want to meet your father? Yeah, she wants to meet her father. Very well, you can meet him. And confess the sin of your uselessness to him. So, the other one asks Katorito to run away. Huh. I hope she gets away. Now the next scene happens where in a rainy forest. So a small shadow. Obviously Katarito is walking along unevenly. She's about at the end of her legs and comes down to squat in a thicket as shelter from the rain. But even through the branches and foliage, water gets through and wets her. She's sad about how these clothes that her father gave her have gotten wet particularly the sleeves, where she dries her tears. Well, it bothered her most right after she got out of the dragon's territory. But it comes back to her as it rains on her. And then there was her retainer, the lizard man. She thinks about if only her father had lived, but that just makes her cry more. She thinks about her hometown, that holy mountain range, but she's in this forest she's never been to and can't see to it, and can't see back to it. And she can't even fly properly, so she's had to do most of it walking. So, the Lizardman had a bit more to say after that particular encounter. So, aside from telling her to leave, it was specifically directing her to go so far that the pursuers would not catch her. But she still doesn't know where to go, or even very much about which way. She doesn't know how far. She just doesn't know what to do. So she scrunches herself up and as she does so, she feels someone approaching. <laughs> this is one of those dragon traits where you can just know that someone's coming up on you. Pursuers. What if they find her? If they're pursuers, they would have that sense as well. So they would catch her. How many of them have they noticed? 
waiting there in the uncertainty is driving her to distraction. She wants to run, but she doesn't know where. She doesn't know which way. And if she runs, what then? If the pursuers are of the dragon trap, hiding like this would have no meaning. They could probably smell her. She wishes that somebody would come and save her. Like the lizard folk who attended to her. But that's not going to happen. He died in order to help her escape. So after that particular clash, he was able to take Katorito at least to some way to the boundary of the dragon's area, dragon's territory. Because he was deeply wounded. Well, he was deeply wounded, but he kept her his hand in hers. But as they approached the boundary, his legs got weaker, and he finally was unable to stand. So, he has a little he must tell her, and asks her to listen. She doesn't want to. Just too much for her. Well, listen anyway. So, he or we believe in her that she has the power appropriate for leading the dragon tribes. I hey, just noticed this. Earlier on he didn't get a name, but now he's got the name Dragon Newt. So, he's not a lizardman. So it's just that because she hasn't awakened yet. She's just a little later than most dragons, is all. So, she must believe in her own power and believe in the pride of the dragon tribes and think of what she must become. So, and if she does so, she will certainly awaken one day. Because she is, without doubt, the remaining image of that hero, Shuketoru. She doesn't want to. She wants him to come with her. He too wishes to do come with her, but unfortunately, he won't be able to accompany her any further. Far away. In any case, she must go far away. Where 
the pursuers won't find her. <laughs> she says, no, don't leave her alone. Far, far away. She doesn't want this. She can't do anything. She's a failure. She doesn't know what to do. She doesn't know which way to go. But she understood that she was alone. So, with her father dead, and she who perhaps should have taken over, uh, being unable to fulfill her role, the other dragon tribes have chased her out. So nobody's going to come and save her. And she is all alone. But she still didn't know what to do. Although she's followed what the dragon newt told her and continued to run. Anyway, here she is feeling the presence of someone approaching her again. And she just sits there crying. But it was humans who came close And they happened by, passed by. And they themselves were so concerned about the rain in the forest that they didn't notice her. And after she couldn't feel the men's presence anymore, she slowly stood up. That dragon newt that had taken care of her since she was born told her to run away, to run far away. She didn't know which way, she didn't know where to, just far away. So interesting in the last words of him, who t he, who protected her, he just, she just continued to walk. Aw oh man, that tears me up inside. So... Let's see this one. Alright, so... Avaro's preparing for battle again. So... Working again. He's always working. So, he observes that she hasn't gone to sleep either. They say that getting a good night's rest is good for your beauty, you know. So, goddesses are always beautiful, so it'll be fine. No matter what, she will look good enough for Avaro to be proud of. <laughs> well, it's true that it doesn't seem like goddesses age. But, Avaro notices a bit of a shadow on Fia's face. So, what's up? So, Avaro, she's gathered up enough 
mega power and her body's all feeling sparkly and stuff so she understands she could she'll be able to move the castle now well that's good we can get one step closer to our goal then Yes, but if we continue like this, we're going to bump into a big city. Ah, oh, well, yeah, naturally you'd be uneasy. As she says, we are kind of coming to a place where we have to slide beside the city Rikbel. But before that, we need to pass through the Sandbugs Ravine. If we don't pass through that particular ravine, they can't get to the God's Haze. Yeah, she's worried about this becoming a battle. I've already even said that for this purpose he needed to make these preparations. Yep, it's true that the possibility there will be a battle is pretty high. If they didn't know which path the castle would take, it would be difficult to send soldiers against us. Because we're mobile. It'd be hard to gather them properly. But in the case of the next confrontation, they would want to pick a place where they were certain we were going to pass. And furthermore, someplace we would have to go fairly slowly. That's as we're headed towards Rikibel City, right? Yep, in passing through the Sandbugs Valley. So, probably that will be where the Influs Kingdom soldiers will target us. So, is Kisnir going to be with them? Probably. Differently from before, we should probably do make our best with the preparations. Because she's a tough opponent. Huh? Well, she won't let us pass through so simply. But somehow we'll be able to get to the town. If it's us, we can do it. After all, we've been making with these preparations. So, if he asks if his work right now is connected to that, and Avaro says, yes, that's part of it. And, of course, fixing up the castle to being in good condition is also important. He wants to do all he can to get things working properly for this. So she's worried he might be overworking himself. So, she says she's been relying on Avaro too much, maybe. And he's always going off in his hard-working trances, so to speak. Since he's trying so hard, isn't it hard on him? <laughs> well, we just need to speak to this concern she has. So he pets her cheek a bit. 
It's fine. Really? She's glad to get this reassurance. So thanks for worrying. But I'm not overworking myself. This place is also my workshop. And this is also part of what I'm doing to realize my dream. I'm doing this because I want to. I want to prepare my workshop and make it the best it can be. This is all for you, right? All for her? Yep. Avaro says again that if he hadn't met Fia, he would now still be taking short jobs and wandering countries and basically lost without a place to return to. Although we're still traveling, it's in this castle, so he has this place. And although it's going to be tough, and there will be lots of things they'll have to do, He's happy to be doing this stuff. It may look like he's overworking himself, but... And she may be very worried about him, but... To him... Actually living like this is like a bit of a dream. And he would like it con to continue. <laughs> yep, she looks reassured, doesn't she? So, she thanks him and says she's really happy to have such a reliable apostle. If I, she leaves it to him, she can continue and she can continue with her heart at ease. Hey, once we pass the Rikbel town, city, she's got something important to tell him. She asks if he'll listen. Hey, the way you say it, I don't suppose it's a confession. So, yeah, I've already figured out what she wanted to say. Almost like the two of them are one already. But yes, it's a confession. She wants to convey her feelings to him again. Hmm. Well, Avar was glad for that. But this is uh, popping up an event flag. With this sort of thing hanging over us, one of us is bound to die in the fight. Not to worry. If Avar was injured, fear will hurry, heal him. If possible, I'd like to get through this without getting hurt. So the two of them continued to talk like this until they grew sleepy. So, that's a scene for you. Alright, so... Starting now, we're going to proceed towards Rikbel through the Sandbugs Valley. Sandbugs Ravine. Everybody ready? It's quite the place. With the castle of this size, they can barely fit through. 
敵から攻められやすい特にこの城塞は You also says that it's dangerous and techies and enemies will be able to attack easily So yeah, they should be sending people from the top of the ravine down to invade us. But since we know that's their likely course of action, we have our own set of countermeasures. So we gotta try our best and get through. What, you've got a speaking part again? So yeah, he's gonna try hard. Jesus Christ. She is so lazy, it makes you want to slap her. But she's going to assist as well. Alright, so, the castle is pretty wide and we wouldn't want to be crashing into walls as we go through. So as much as possible, Fia needs to concentrate on the movement of the castle. Yep, that's her part and the rest of us do the defending. She's counting on us. So, one final com comment. We need to make sure we have our defensive emplacements prepared. We can do it at Navarro's workshop before we enter the ravine. Speaking of which, I'm not really prepared for that yet. Gee, thanks, bitch. Uh, no, those are too valuable. Okay, we didn't get much from that map, but we weren't uh, asking for much. Now, defensive emplacements. Hmm. That should do it. I've already played ahead a bit, so I know what I need to be doing. And the defensive emplacements aren't all that important. But you may as well make them. Something I do want to do, however. Although I'm loath to take out my trees. I'm going to place... Let's see, five more houses. Oops. Oh. I guess I only need four if I have this one. Uh, I don't have enough to make any formations. Oops. Each of these houses adds one to the command power. That's the number that I can't exceed the unit costs of. Since Ranrin has joined our party, we can easily go over our limit and tripling our fatigue expenditures. But if we land enough houses in here, we'll be able to field her as easily in the battle as well. So. Yeah, I think we are all prepared. So once I click on that and send, mes send us into that scene, it's going to be fun times, I'll tell you. And that concludes your video for today. I'll see you next time, YouTube.